Hi guys, so this is Caitlin. I am one of your SI leaders for your Bio 5B class with Dr. Joseph. Today we're going to be talking about angiosperm and the different characteristics that an angiosperm has. So a really quick overview, just kind of like usual. First we're going to talk about what are angiosperm, um, the different components of a flower, types of fruit, advantages that the angiosperm clade has. So what are angiosperm? These are basically plants that have seeds and seeds, flowers, and fruit. Um, so if you have the time, I would recommend that you go back and look at seeds and just kind of think to yourself, what are the different characteristics that um, seeds have and what kind of adaptations do seeds have that kind of um, help the, help all plants just kind of, the, um, just kind of like a quick thing that you can do. Um, next, so just to kind of move along, um, because that because angiosperms have all these different adaptations, like mentioned seeds, flowers, fruit, um, they're actually the most widely um, spread plant. So actually, ninety percent of all land plants are angiosperms. So let's talk about flowers. Flowers are essentially specialized shoots for sexual reproduction. Its main purpose is to promote pollination, and it's actually made of four modified leaves. So as you can see here with this really quick like diagram, it's made of sepals, carpal, stamen, and petals, which we will go into. So the components of a flower, let's first talk about sepals. So these protect the developing buds. So as you can see in this diagram, it's going to be these green leafy, looking um, outer layers um, and it's as I mentioned its main purpose is to really protect the developing, developing buds and it can actually do this depending on temperature um, and so yeah. The next is petals um, and of course we all know what petals are it's the right the bright big um, leaves their main purpose is to attract pollinators um, but one thing to note is that the size of your petals can actually vary depending on your plant type um, and how it spreads its pollen. The next is stamen, stamen, sorry. Um, so these are going to be your male reproductive organs. It's actually made up of also an anther and a filament. So these are things that you are going, going to want to remember, um, the components of these leaves. Um, so here in the stamen, its main purpose is to make microspore or your pollen. Finally, we have carpels, which are the female reproductive organs, and its main purpose is to make the microspore. Um, and it does eventually become the ovary once it undergoes the fertilization event. So after it, um, your flower undergoes the fertilization event, um, you get the development of your fruit, which is basically just the mature ovary that surrounds seeds after fertilization. So its main pur it has two purposes. The first is to protect developing seeds, and the second is to really promote seed, di seed dispersal. So basically what happens is an animal will come, it'll see these fruits, it'll ingest these fruits, and because the animal is traveling um, long distances or it's just traveling somewhere that is not really next to this uh, plant. Um, once it defecates the seeds, it is then spreading the seed around. Fruits can be either fleshy or dry. So an example of a fleshy fruit would be watermelon, pineapple, apple, oranges, all these things, right? Um, and a dry example would really be like your nuts. So cashew, almonds, all these different things. So within the angiosperm clade, you also have this division of monocot versus dicot, um, which is very crucial. So I'm not going to go into all of these characteristics because you can really just kind of look at this diagram and really understand it. Um, but I would, you know, take the time to kind of understand um, at least just maybe all the monocot characteristics. So when we look at monocot versus eudicot, monocots are called monocots because they really have one cotyledon, um, which is they have one leaf uh, when their embryo develops. Unicots are, have actually have two cotyledons and that's kind of their unique characteristics which defines them. 
So between the two, you can kind of see that they are very different. So monocots have leafy nation where the veins are usually parallel. The stem um, vascular tissue is also different. Um, and you just have all these different characteristics. So I would take the time if I were you guys to really go through this diagram. So finally, advantageous traits. Um, so in this slide, we just kind of want to think about why is it that angiosperm are so effective? And so the first thing that kind of contributes to their effectiveness um, is their rapid life cycle. So in contrast to things like gymnosperms, um, angiosperm actually are able to germinate within really one to two to three weeks. So it's really a very quick germination cycle. The second reason is that they have increased symbiosis. And so what this means is that angiosperm are really developing mutualistic relationships. So the most common example, the most prominent example is the relationship between mycorrhizae and the angiosperm root systems. So in this relationship, the mycorrhizae or the fungi um, help the angiosperm absorb uh, increased water and um, nutrients from the soil and in return your angiosperm your angiosperm plant will provide the fungi with um, sugar. So finally the third thing is that angiosperm have better vascular tissue so they just have a more developed vascular system which helps with the transportation of water, nutrients, and sugars. So that's all we have for today's video. This was just a really quick summary on um, everything that there is to know about, or just not everything there is to know about angiosperm, but a quick summary on good things to know about angiosperm. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, thanks for coming.